So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. It's Saturday. I have a lot to get done today. It's already 10 o'clock. Is it 10? Yeah, it's 10 o'clock. I got a graduation party to go to tonight, but before I do any of that, I need to mow the yard, check on the kiln. What in the world is that? Oh, those cats have drugged another bird in the garage. They get these birds and kill them and drag them in the garage and eat them. And it makes just a mess in there. That's one thing about having farm cats outside, especially these boys. They kill everything. They leave the mess for me to clean up. So where was I? All right, so today's events, I need to mow the yard, I need to check on the kiln, and then we're gonna head to the sawmill and do a modification and saw up some yellow pine. Not yellow pine, it's white pine. I don't know what I'm saying today. Skeeter got me already. Man, I'm not starting off too good here today. Be 25 and start mowing while I'm doing that. I'm gonna jump on the T25 and start mowing. And while I'm doing that, you guys check out this footage from yesterday when I loaded up the dry kiln. All right, friends, we're down here at the kiln chamber. And if you're new to this channel, this is the L200 Pro kiln chamber. It's a really good kiln. This is my second Nile kiln I've had in the past few years. If you're interested in these kilns, there's a link down below, you can go check them out. The capacity for this one is about 4,000 feet. And that does vary a little depending upon what you're drying. If you're doing soft woods like pine, and it's really green, you can put about 1,500 feet in here. But if it's air dried stuff, you can pretty much go about 4,000 feet and be in good shape. So we've got a good stack in here, friends. All this stuff that you're looking at has been sawed for about 18 months. Some of the walnut was actually two years ago. It's all eight quarter and nine quarter. 90% of it is black walnut. I do have some magnolia right here on the very top layer. I'm going to monitor that by itself. There's the leads right there going to the magnolia right there. And I'm going to see how it does while I'm drying. I'm going to be pretty conservative on this little batch right here since I do have magnolia in here. And a misconception about kiln drying, you can actually mix up your species if you have the same thickness, if it's been air dried and it's in the same wood group. So walnut and magnolia is actually in the same group. It's all been air dried down to about 15% or less. Now this is not a full load by no means. It's about 1,200 board feet total. Over here we have eight footers. Then this stack right here is four foot and five foot long crotch walnut slabs. Now if you're wondering about all this insulation, this is baffles, guys. And if you take extra time to baffle the load before you turn the kiln on, you're going to have a better drying experience. And the reason you want to baffle this is you want to close off the best you can the airflow so when it comes through the fans up there, we've got four fans up there that's going continuously. You want that air to come down here through the stack and be forced through your stack of lumber right there. You don't want it going around it or going anywhere else. You want that hot air going in your stack and that's what's really gonna dry your lumber. Now, a little disclaimer, you can't get it perfect. There's a little gap right there I'm not too happy about. And right there is another little gap. But for the most part, it's pretty sealed up. There's a lot of insulation in here. And I do a few test runs as well with the fans running to make sure they don't blow away when you turn them on. This insulation is actually pretty light. But that's the main reason you baffle it. As that air comes through the fans, it travels through the lumber and goes back behind the fans and the moisture goes through the compressor at that point and gets pulled out the back and dumped in a five gallon bucket. So drying lumber is not that hard if you have the right equipment. You just gotta remember that the kiln is not drying your wood. It creates an environment inside this chamber for the wood to dry in. You always wanna remember that. The kiln's not doing it, it's actually just creating that environment for the lumber to dry. Now this is also gonna be the first load that I've ran with this new system here. I got the leads in four different slads, magnolia, walnut, walnut, and walnut right there. That way I can go out here on my control station. Over here behind the kiln, right there is the control station where you make all your adjustments and you read all your temperatures. And right here is the newest addition to the kiln, those wires we just looked at that checks the moistures, they all come up right there. Of course, they go into the kiln right there in that flex wire. And there's my different selections. And there's my Delmhurst meter. And that way I can come out here 
picked a selection right there and, and make sure you write down what wire goes to what slab then hit the meter and get a reading so right there it's on magnolia 2c is actually the core of the magnolia which is the middle of the slab and our, our uh, moisture right there if that's coming through on the camera is 14.4 percent all right friends stop what you're doing and click on the link down below and go subscribe to my blog because I'm going to be doing daily entries, well not daily, probably every two or three days, giving updates on the moisture content on this load here. You guys can follow with me until we get it dry. It might be pretty interesting, I think, for you guys out there that are interested in drying your own lumber. Go subscribe below, just enter your email address and hit subscribe. When I put a new blog post up, you guys will get a notification. You can go check it out and see how this load's doing. friends i got the mowing done i just checked on the kiln we're sitting at 110 degrees on the dry bulb the wet bulb showing about 91 so we're in good shape right there before we head up to the sawmill i need to get the 754 and move some white oak logs out of my front yard had a buddy of mine drop some off about a week ago and there's some pretty good white oak logs and i haven't had time to move them but i need to take those up closer to the sawmill and then we'll go up there and saw up some walnut and probably some pine Before we get started here today, I need to finish up this walnut log from the last video. How wide was this stuff right here? 24 inches right there at the crotch. That's pretty good. Now, if you didn't see this video, I saw this up about two days ago. There's a link down below, go check it out because this right here was probably the nicest crotch walnut log I've had on this channel in a long time. I'm gonna make one more cut and this log is done. I'll just split this one down the middle and get two more eight quarter slabs, and then we'll move on to something else. And as always on the sawmill, I'm running the Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. I get those from Joe down in Georgia. If you want those blades, give him a call. His cell phone number is down in the video description.
that walnut right there is hard to beat, guys. I could saw that stuff every day and probably never get tired of it. I would get tired of lugging these slabs around because, man, they're heavy, but I wouldn't get tired of looking at the grain. So I made a little error today. I actually thought this little graduation party that we're going to today for my niece was at 5 o'clock. It's actually at 4 o'clock, which means I don't have any more time today, guys. So thanks for watching, guys. I want to thank everybody on Patreon for supporting me here on the channel. You guys have a good evening.